All right, it's 3.30, so I'm going to go ahead and get started to best use our time. Um, I want to welcome you to today's webcast. Um, today's webcast is going to be all about data dashboards, and it's kind of a blast off for Google Data Studio. I'm going to be talking about creating um, easy data dashboards using Google Data Studio. So I want to welcome you to today's webinar. In the chat box, I am pasting a link to um, the session resources for today. So to kick us off, this is Webinar Wednesday. This is the March 27th, 2019 edition, and we're talking data dashboards with Google Data Studio. So welcome, I'm Carla Kuyper. EBR Director of Technology Integration. I'm a Google for Education certified trainer and also a G Suite certified administrator. And so I'll be taking you through this walkthrough on Google Data Studio and data dashboarding. If for any reason you have joined on the web and you get disconnected in terms of your web connection, you can dial in using your phone. The uh, information is on the screen. If you use the tiny URL in the chat box and um, you need to call in, that information is uh, readily available for you. Today's agenda, again, is going to be all about data dashboarding and getting started with Google Data Studio. I want to just provide some introductory material about data dashboarding and in terms of talking about why you might want to begin creating data dashboards. Um, when are some of the situations when you will like to create a dashboard? Um, specifically, why use Google Data Studio? Um, I'll show you some examples of ways that you can incorporate Google Data Studio into your classroom or into your work. And then we'll talk about some of the fundamentals. Time permitting, um, I have a little project that we could do together or that we could start working on together. I do have some step-by-step -step directions that you can follow even if time doesn't permit us to walk entirely through the example in the time that we have. Um, some tips, and then we can talk uh, you can ask questions and we can um, share questions and answers as well. So Webinar Wednesday is part of a series. And so this episode is going to be about D Google Data Studio. The next episode will be on April 3rd and we'll talk about becoming a Google certified educator. And as you can see, it's a series. You can get more information about the webinars um, that we have coming up in Go Sign Me Up, as well as on our website. So data dashboards, why begin creating data dashboards? Now, their data dashboards are everywhere. They're being used a lot um, in marketing, and they're also making a big uh, comeback or a big um, entrance into K-12 education because they are so, so useful for so many different things. So data dashboards really help us to create a visual and objective view of performance. So whether we're talking about employee performance, um, team performance, student performance, data dashboards help us to display data in a way that can be really understood very quickly. So it really helps um, team members, students, parents, fellow teachers understand things very, very quickly. Because they're visual, you can connect a data dashboard to one file or to several, which is an advantage over creating charts and graphs um, in a spreadsheet program like Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, data dashboards are best fueled by a question, and they really help to turn data into actionable insights. They can be extremely useful when you need to monitor key processes or even activities, sometimes even in real time. So when might you create a dashboard? You can create a dashboard when you have multiple spreadsheets or sources of information that you're collecting. So if you're capturing information in a spreadsheet, whether you're entering data in, 
whether you receive the data, whether you're collect collecting or capturing information through a Google form. If you have multiple sources of information and you want to bring those together, that's a good time to consider creating a dashboard. Another time when you might want to consider a dashboard is when you'd like to monitor results in real time. So you may be capturing information from students or from team members and that information may be changing all of the time. And it's great whenever you um, have a lot of information and you really want to reduce the number of hours that you're spending analyzing data, cleaning up sheets, and, and so on. So why Google Data Studio? Google Data Studio has been around um, for a few years. It was in a, a beta form for a while. But I really, really want to get you started using Google Data Studio because, number one, it's free. Now, there are some really wonderful data visualization programs out there that are not free. And you may want to spend time learning those once you get really comfortable with Google Data Studio. But I think Data Studio is wonderful. It costs um, nothing, and it's part of our Google uh, for Education, G Suite for Education. It's very easy to get started. A third reason is that if you use Google Drive, you can start with the Google Sheets that you probably already have. So a big advantage is that Google Data Studio is very integrated with Google Drive. So if you've been using Google Drive, you're in for a treat. If you use Excel, don't worry. You can still use Excel Sheets and bring those into Google Data Studio. You just need to make sure that when you have Excel files that you save those files in a .csv format. So as long as you have Excel, and you make sure that you save it as a comma separated values file, you can pretty much bring it into um, Google Data Studio. Or if you wanna think about it this way, just when you upload that Excel file into your Google Drive, be sure that you um, convert it to a Google Sheets format. And um, another benefit of Google Data Studio is that you can combine data from multiple resources. There are 150 different connections that you can make inside of Google Data Studio. I don't use all of those connections, and I'm, most people probably don't either. But just for your information, there are many, many connections that are possible. So let's talk about a few ways that you might get started are ways to become familiar with this wonderful tool called Google Data Studio. So in the first example that I'll, that I'll share today, you can think of using Google Data Studio to visualize information gathered from different surveys. And there are many different ways to do this in the K-12 setting in your class or in your school. The first example that I'm going to share is a student um, internet survey example. And so you'll see two icons on the screen. If you click the first one, you'll see the Google Sheet icon, and it'll take you to a Google Sheet. And you'll see um, this is an example of a student internet survey that high school students, some high school students completed about their access to the internet and access to high-speed internet access to computers at home, things like that. So you'll see this um, information was actually captured by way of a Google form. So I had students fill out a Google form and tell me whether or not they had reliable internet access at home, whether or not their internet access was high speed, if they have um, a computer or a tablet at home. And so this is the information that you see captured here. So it's time stamped, school, grade level, and so on. The second icon that you'll see will take you to Google Data Studio. And uh, the first part of the link that's coming up is datastudio.google.com. So you can access Google Data Studio at datastudio.google.com. And so you can see this is a, a basic, really basic dashboard. Um, there's there are really no bells and whistles here um, built off of this spreadsheet from this to this. Now, the advantage of the spreadsheet is that it helps me to look at each student and see, identify those that don't have internet access and identify those that do. But the benefit of the 
dashboard is that as students are completing the form, I'm collecting and capturing all of this information. And so I'm capturing things like the number of, of surveys that have been completed. So I'm, I'm measuring the performance of this survey, how well is the survey doing, or students filling it out. And then I can also look at things like the grade levels of the students, their access at home, which most of them have access, about 30% don't. Um, I have students in real time telling me if they have access to reliable internet, which most do, but about again, about 30% don't. And then I'm capturing some information in this dashboard in, in real time about where students complete online homework. One of the Google form questions had a question asking them where they completed their online homework and projects. And so you can see in real time, I've got um, a pie chart here telling me some things about how students are, are responding. And the cool part about this dashboard is that I can look at the results by grade level. So I can um, choose to, to look at ninth graders or I could choose to drill down by grade level to the 10th graders and so on or I could look at all the grade levels and I can drill down to the results by school And so while I could have taken this spreadsheet and created a ton of um, different charts um, on extra sheets tabbed into this, uh, this workbook, I, I decided instead to go ahead and use Google Data Studio to do something really straightforward and really um, simple with it. So it starts with a spreadsheet and then I brought this over into Google Data Studio. So again, datastudio.google.com. If you have a district Google account, you or a personal Google account, you have access, you probably have access to this. So you'll see there isn't an icon for it in the launcher, but datastudio.google.com. When you get to the home page, you'll notice that you can, you can create a blank report or there are even some templates. Now you'll notice that the, the templates aren't necessarily aligned to an educational setting. They tend to be about um, internet traffic and marketing and well actually there's one here about world population but this product is still fairly new and i'm sure that over time as k-12 educators like us embrace google data studio they'll probably start posting some templates and some reports that are specifically for the k-12 world so in my data studio homepage, you'll see i've got reports that i've built data sources or spreadsheets that I've brought in, um, data studio dashboard reports that people have shared with me and those that I've created. There's just a couple more things that I'd like to point out on this page on the left side. There's also a report gallery. made up of dashboards and reports that are built in the, do, the Google Data Studio community. So these are shared by different people who like to build dashboards and share them with others. And then one last thing that I think um, is really important here um, are some video tutorials. And the video tutorials are actually very, very helpful. As I was beginning to um, learn to use Data Studio, I actually watched these 
And it's, it's not that many, it's, it's about, it's the first six videos. So the introduction to data studio, how to connect your data sources, um, how to share a report and how to use date ranges. If you, if you just watch those four, you've already picked up a bunch of different skills in terms of, of using data studio. So I really recommend these videos. They are extremely helpful. So the next example that I have, um, I have a, another example coming up, but what I want to talk about before I do that is just to talk about other applications. So the example that I showed you had to do with internet and students. There are other applications um, that you can use for surveys. If you need to do employee surveys, parent surveys, and event evaluations. The questions that you can answer with the dashboard would be how many people have completed the survey? Um, you can track that in real time. And are there any group-based differences in responses to, uh, to the survey? Okay, so I'm just gonna pause for a minute. Any questions so far? All right. Okay, the second example that I'd like to share this afternoon um, is a budget dashboard. So what if um, you have a budget that you're working with? You may have a class budget, you might have a school budget department, and you want to track performance in real time. So I've got an example. This is what the spreadsheet looks like. Okay, so let's imagine that we have a really simple budget that we're tracking some information across the last month. We've got um, dates, expense items, costs that we've budgeted, costs that we've tracked, and then the differences. This might be a really oversimplified example. You may want to think about using um, an example more appropriate to your area of work if you, if you use budgets that are more complicated. But in this example, you can kind of see what we have. So we're tracking some expenses and, and costs. So in the Data Studio example that I built around this really simple school budget example, I can keep up with what, what has been spent, the actual costs versus the, what is in the budget and track in real time what's available. Now to do that, I have to keep the sheet up to date. So I have to update the sheet in terms of my spending, what I'm spending it on, when the date, the cost, the budgeted cost, and then also the actual cost. As I make changes to the sheet, the dashboard template will make changes in real time. And so I can do things like, in addition to tracking those budgeted costs versus the actual expenses and what's available still in the budget, I can look at where my um, budgeted costs um, actually are more than what I've actually spent and vice versa. So I can see things like general supplies where my actual spending is outpacing what I had in the budget. So that might be an area of concern. I can also look at the different expenses by type and get a good look at where the money is going because that's a big question whenever working with, with budgets, whether it's an event budget for school or a department or, um, or something similar. So you can see um, the biggest part of the budget is going to out-of-state travel in this example and also uniforms in this example. So if that's a concern, then that's an area that I can address. And then I can also have um, an area in this dashboard where I can track where my costs are really high, dates when my costs are really high, and then dates when I'm, when I'm not spending anything. And the nice part is, is that Data Studio will let you put in a date range so I can track expenses from the 1st of March through, let's say, the 15th. 
and look at that versus tracking expenses from the latter part of the month. So just a different way to look at the same information. And even though Google Sheets are awesome and I love the charts and the graphs that you can generate with those, it can be a little bit more cumbersome to create um, filtered views and to create views that allow you to, to make your charts and graphs as interactive as you can make them within Google Data Studio. So how all of this comes together is that this is basically a slide. And in that slide, I've got some, some controls or some charts that I've added in. So the three that you see at the top that are costs, these are basically just scorecards. This is a, a bar chart. And in it, I'm tracking the dimensions of the expenses and the metric that I'm comparing, I'm comparing the actual and budgeted costs. And then here at the bottom is a time series chart. And it's basically all dropped in on one slide area. So everything in Google Data Studio is pretty much drag and drop. So if I want to, I'll show you how I inserted the scorecards. So insert a scorecard. And you'll see without uh, manipulating anything, Google Data Studio uses some AI and it pulled a metric, which is uh, one of the numerical categories that I have. And I could, I could do any of these. Same thing here, insert a bar chart and I can um, create this chart. This is a pie chart, tracking the expense items by the actual cost. Again, every time I update the, the spreadsheet, then it's connected to the, the dashboard, so it's going to update. And I'll show you how it works to connect the two together. So as you can see, I've gone back to the Data Studio homepage. And I'm going to open a blank report. And as you can see right here, I've got an untitled report, nothing happening, a blank slide. On the right side, Google Data Studio is asking me some things about adding a data source. So a data source is a spreadsheet, for example, or it can be a spreadsheet. So I'm going to create a new data source. These are all of the connections that I mentioned earlier in the webinar. You can connect data from a variety of different resources depending on what you have access to. If you have access to um, MySQL for cloud or BigQuery um, or Google Ads, Google Analytics, um, you can bring in all of that type of data. But if you're starting out, I recommend that you connect using Google Sheets. So connect your dashboards using some relatively simple data sources to, to manage and to work with. So you can use Google Sheets. Um, so Google Data Studio will go looking in your Google Drive for your Google Sheets. And another simple way to get started is that you can use the file upload connection. So there's, there's two. Um, you can connect to those comma separated values files. So you can upload a file if you're working with um, CSV files, those work great. Or in this example, I can connect to a Google Sheet. So I'm going to select Google, Google Sheets and it's going to, again, integrate completely in with my Google Drive. I'll select a spreadsheet. And if I had multiple worksheets within that spreadsheet, I would see those. I've only got one sheet within this one. And the 
next thing that I need to do is just to make sure that I have first row as headers and let Google Data Studio know if I want to use any hidden or filtered cells. Okay, a couple things here that you see at the bottom right are super important and I want to highlight them. One is that column headers do, do need to be unique in your Google Sheet or in your Excel um, CSV. You need to make sure that you don't have dupl duplicative column headers and uh, make sure that you don't have any columns with uh, empty headers. So if you, if you have columns with empty headers, then that will be a problem. So once I've done that, let me go back. Create new data. Get my Google Sheet connection. Select the spreadsheet. And once everything is set, I'm going to connect. And Google Data Studio is so helpful and it's so powerful. It went right to my Google Sheet, pulled the column headers from my Google Sheet and added them in as fields. And it has even detected the type of um, field that's involved. So I had a date, text, for the item type, and then numbers for things like the budgeted cost, the actual cost, and the differences. Now in here, you can go in and set some, and define some different dimensions for your data. For example, I can get really specific and tell Google Data um, Studio that these are um, currencies and that these are US dollar amounts and you can go in and do that. Another good practice is to go in and create a description for each um, data field, just in case if you ever need to go back and, um, and figure out what you did or um, how you calculated certain things within your, your dashboard, then this is a really good thing to do. But to save time, I'm not going to add descriptions. I'm just going to say add to report. Data Studio is gonna prompt me and I'll add them to the report. Now, <clears throat> you may be wondering, where's all the data? What's going on? So I have still have a blank slide at this point. So to get started, I'm going to add a chart. And the first thing would be a scorecard. And there's my budgeted costs. I'll add another scorecard. And you'll see, notice that it's exactly the same as the first one. But so I'll make the change here. So instead of a budgeted cost, I'll drag and drop in the actual costs and then the difference as well. I'll add a chart, add a scorecard. And then notice I'm working from left to right. So I'm working over to the right side. And instead of repeating that same metric that I had before, I'll drag and drop a different metric in this time. Again, even though I didn't specify initially what these would be, I can go in, hit the little pencil, and tell Data Studio that I'm working with currency, with US currency specifically. And do the same thing here. So when you hit the pencil, you can change the name that's displayed in the dashboard and you can specify things like if you're working with currency, what type, and so on. Just like you would format in a spreadsheet. You also notice that there's some style dimensions on the right side as well. When you click on one of your, your items, you have the option to change things, to hide the metric name or keep it there, change things like uh, formatting the text and doing things like changing the background. So there's quite a bit more that you can, you can do. 
So I can continue to drag and drop in elements. So I've got my budgeted costs and expense items. And I can switch that metric around just by dragging and dropping things in from the available fields. And I can continue to build by adding in more of these elements. So, and you can see what some of those are. Things like pivot tables and much, much more. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna pause at this point and just ask if, the, if you have any questions about getting started. All right. Um, if you don't have any questions that you thought of just yet, I'll keep moving along to keep us going. Um, if you work with budgets and you find yourself building a dashboard around budgets, you can do event budgets, department budgets. The big questions that you can answer visually with visualizations are, are we in the red? Are we in the black? Do we need to cut back or do we have additional money? Where, where did the money go? What did I spend it on? Is there anything left? Um, and in what areas um, are we outspending the, uh, the, the school or department budget? All right, in this third example, uh, we'll take a look at. This one is based on student performance. And in this example, I'm going to look at some pre and post scores this is a year, um, school year pre and post math assessment for sixth grade, but this would work just fine for a pre um, assessment for a unit and a post assessment for a unit as well. Or it could work with uh, common formative assessments as well, just fine. So uh, let me jump back. Here we go. I'm going to go to the and link that um, and I'll throw those hyperlinks in the chat box if they're if the links on the slides aren't working properly. So here we go. All right, let me give it a search. Here we go. All right, so this um, board is built off of a sample EDEMS assessment. And so I, I can build a dashboard that will show the um, number of students that tested. And it also looks at the math pre and post test scores, looking at the number correct. And I can also look at the growth for each class. So the nice part about this dashboard is that it has additional pages, and I'll show you how to add pages into your dashboards. And also, it can identify, I can drill down to the level of students, look at the, a student's pre and post, and then um, also look at their, look at the change and, or how much growth. 
And if I'm updating my spreadsheet in real time, then this will update within real time as well. The last page in this dashboard allows me to drill down to the specific areas covered or the specific domains um, covered within the pre and post test. So I can look at the growth um, in the classes based on um, specific domains. So I can see where they started, that's T1, where they ended up, T2, and then their growth. So going into edit mode, out of presentation mode and into edit mode, you'll see that there's a, a few things happening. On the left side, I've got three pages. And when you are on the left side and you hit the pages, you can add as many pages as you like. And you can even drag and move pages around in a dashboard. Click the plus sign to add a new page and a, a blank page appears. So the um, charts that you see within this dashboard, this is a scorecard, keeping up with the number of students that have been, um, been tested. And you can see it's tracking an available um, data source, a spreadsheet that I have within my Google Drive. So I connected this one to Google Drive. This is a table. And the nice thing about this table is that the table has heat maps already built into it. So the nice thing is, is that when you add a chart, you can add a regular table or you can add a table with bars or you can add a table with a heat map. So you even have that option as well. Again, everything in Data Studio is drag and drop. And then it's up to you to add in your dimensions. So the dimension is like the, the categories that I want to examine. So those would be classes. And then the metric are the numbers or the, the performance that I'm tracking. And so if I'm looking at post-test scores, or I could drag and drop in the pre-test scores, or both, and stack them one alongside the other. And again, everything is drag and drop, no complicated um, manipulations to learn here. One thing that I will point out is that if you um, don't specify when you're setting up your connection about whether or not you want to see a total or an average or a percent, you can go in, hit the pencil, and make a change there. And so now if I go back into presentation view, you'll see um, the visualization I just built pre and post, and now I'm back to having averages. And back in edit mode, I can do more things with the layout and also with the theme as well. So student performance data, um, teacher walkthroughs, if you have school level data like attendance, I've got another example in here of how you could use school level data. Um, where can students benefit from support? Where can instructors benefit from support? So I've got some in here. You can click around. You can kind of play around with, with those as well. The last example that I have is a, a school technology inventory. And it's a simple spreadsheet with a school name, school level, and equipment type, number of items, costs, 
And if you're not working across schools, if you're not working across multiple schools, this could be the name of the teacher in the classroom, the grade level. You could just as easily put in this type of information instead of the name of school and school level. And then um, the dashboard that you can build off of a simple, simple spreadsheet, one that doesn't have any formulas or calculations in it. So I can track the number of items. track costs and inventory by school, get a clear picture of where the majority of um, items are and what they are, and even drill down and look at differences by, by level. Now in this particular um, sheet, I want to hit edit and show you that there are a couple of scorecards here that I dropped in. So I added in number of items and total cost. I added in a pie chart that's tracking total cost by equipment type. Or I could just as easily add, um, be tracking total cost um, by school level. Or by the name of the school. But I've got two controls at the top and those are filters. So you can also add in a filter. So when you click the filter control, it gives you a control and it gives you a dimension and then a dimension for the metric. And when you add those to your page, it will it filters the information for that metric. So in this case, filtering by school or by school level. Again, the, there are very few um, limits or um, formulas that you have to write once you connect your spreadsheet to Google Data Studio. So what I wanna do in the, the time remaining is just to find out if you, what do you all think of this? If you have questions, you're going to notice that on some of the slides that I have following these examples, I've got some explanations of the controls because if you get started, as you get started, you may notice that there are some controls at the top. I think there's a reasonable number and I think that's why Google Data Studio is so user friendly and so um, clean and creates elegant looking reports that there, there aren't too many controls, but you'll notice that you can do things like download a report as a PDF, you can schedule email delivery, which is um, really cool because what Data Studio will do is that it will allow you to send yourself a reminder to look at this report, basically. So if you're capturing data in real time, so if you, if you give a budget out and you're asking people to work on that budget and as the information is coming in or as the inventory information is coming in or as test scores or survey responses are coming in, you get this reminder to, uh, it'll email you every day to log in and look at the, the report. So I can tell, um, Data Studio to email me every day and hit schedule. So for 8 a.m., I'll get an email with a link to the report. And if there are any updates, then the, they'll be right there for me. You can also get a link to share with others. Um, if you have a website and you need to share the information with the public, then you can, you can embed, you can get the code off of a Data Studio report and embed it. Full screen view, the refresh data, which is great when, so you can refresh your report 
And if you're connected to a spreadsheet that others are helping you to complete or that is being populated by a Google form, then that's how you refresh your data in real time. You can also make copies of your reports. And then there's, uh, there's help options as well. You can uh, hit the view button to switch from presentation mode to edit mode, just like in very similar to Google Slides. Um, it's very easy. And then finally, the last control that you'll see in this group is to switch to different Google Data Studio products like Google Analytics. There's a, a second set of controls that I think once you get comfortable with these, then you really have a great foundation for using this product. Um, how to add pages, so how to select things in the report, undo, add a chart. There are how to add in a date control when you're working with information that's been time stamped on a spreadsheet or from a populated from a Google form. Um, I don't use the ad community visualizations too much. Those are generally built by third parties and um, may, don't really apply as much in the, in the K-12 world just yet. But you'll see that there are several other things that you can do, like adding shapes, changing your layout themes and options. And then here are those controls that I was talking about, date control, data control, and filter control. After the controls, which I would really um, encourage you to print out if you really like having um, something next to you as you begin to build dashboards and you want something to take notes and write and draw ideas, then take those two slides that I just showed you with the controls and print those out. And then the next thing is a step-by-step -step set of directions that will take you through building your own dashboard or your first dashboard. So if you follow these steps, um, going to Google Data Studio, starting a blank report, create a new data source, and I've got a hyperlink on the left side that will take you through and allow you to make a copy of a hands-on project. Here it comes. That I promise that if you follow these steps, you will get comfortable in Google Data Studio really quickly. Now, in a concept of a workshop like this, we don't have the time um, really to go through each and every one of these steps. We did some of these earlier in the webinar, how to start a blank report from the home page, how to get to the home page, how to create a new data source. And then I've got a sample Google Sheet that you can pull up and open. In this sample project, I've got a list of the top 100 websites that students visit in EBR. And in this project, you'll be building a dashboard to show um, what websites students are visiting the most based on the amount of time that they spend. Um, how many hits those websites get in the amount of time that they spend. So how to connect. And then how to connect the Google Sheet to the report. So I've got all of the different um, screenshots here. And then how to add the, the field, how to uh, modify the field columns, how to add the data. and then how to use those scorecard tools. And so I've just, I've just broken it down for you um, in one step at a time, one thing at a time. And um, like I said, if you follow these steps and you, and you also take some time and watch the videos, you'll be able to build your own dashboard. So what I'd like to do at this point is give you a chance to make a copy of the hands-on project so that you can go back after today's webinar and work through the fundamentals 
the things that um, we've demoed in today's webinar, how to add a scorecard, how to add a bar chart, and find out if you have any questions about this. Well, what I want to do is take a few minutes, jump back over to Google Data Studio. I'll show you that based from this project and the step-by-step -step directions, what the finished product will look like. So you see, um, the first thing I have is just a table brought in. And I'll go into edit mode to show you this a little bit, to show you a little bit more. So in edit mode, I've got a table. And then a filter control, which is filtering the, the websites by category. And you'll see, so here's my connected data source. It's a CSV. And you'll see the time spent in minutes is the metric tracked and the dimension being the, the site category. Really simple, there are two pages. And in the second page, you'll see that there's a table with a heat map, which once you just go to add a chart, you'll see it right at the very top. Or you could just as easily work using one of the other visualizations. Now, once I have a chart like this or a, a dashboard like this built, it's very, very easy to disseminate this and share this with other people. We're working in Google, and so we're working with the power of Google Drive and Google's collaboration tools. So I can go in and go to the right side and share the report and start typing in names or email addresses so you see the familiar share um, panel opens up and so it's just as if you were sharing a Google Doc or anything else that you would share in Google. I can type in an email address, hit send, and so go ahead and share and share this report. If, if I needed a hard copy to take with me to a presentation or a meeting, the report is very easily downloaded. And so I can even download some of the pages or all of them. And I can even do things like um, add a link to the report to the PDF so that if I'm sharing the PDF in a digital form, it'll take them to Google Data Studio. And I can even do things as if this report contained very sensitive information, I could password protect it as well. Okay, so Google Data Studio, a very, very um, hopefully relaxed introductory 
walkthrough to this amazing tool. You can get started. There are thousands of things that you can do with it beyond the things that I've shown you. But I promise if you go through this hands-on project with the step-by-step -step directions, when you get to the end, you will have your own dashboard and you will be amazed at how powerful and how quickly um, you're able to, to work in this tool. So at this point, I'm going to step back share a few tips, and then let you tell me what you think of this. Um, really quickly, time spent cleaning up your spreadsheets is well spent. Um, I believe that less is more when it comes to dashboard. Keep the number of charts to a minimum. Create interactivity. If Once you get used to adding controls, then your charts and your dashboards can become very interactive. And if you make your dashboards interactive, then people will use them over and over again. And then emphasizing aesthetics over the thinking, over answering questions that are really important is not really smart. Um, if you want to learn more, there are some Google Data Studio tutorials. And then also hit the question mark in Google Data Studio in the control menu, and it'll take you to the Data Studio help as well. So question and answer. What do you all think of this? Are you going to build a dashboard? Or maybe right now you might just be thinking, I like this, but help, I'm not really sure what to do with it yet. Um, feel free to tell me what you think of this or message me in the chat box and I'll be happy to get back with you and help you to get um, closer to your, to your goal of building a dashboard or building some dashboards for your school, your department, or even for your classroom. Okay, so um, how to access the hands-on document. I will drop the link in. And let me make sure everything is shared for you. Let's change that to anyone with the link. And then um, the slide deck is also linked in the chat box. But if you want to get some of the ideas off the um, off the slides, some of the sample, I will share that tiny URL again as well. All right, so at this point it's 4.30, and many of you may be thinking I've used up a lot of your time. I hope I've used it well. I hope I've inspired you and encouraged you to go back and go to datastudio.google.com and start having a great time taking some of those spreadsheets that you have and turning them into actionable information um, instead of just a bunch of numbers just sitting around in your Google Drive or on a USB drive. And so again, if you have any questions after this webinar, or if you start building a dashboard and you run into some problems, please um, reach out to me and I would be happy to talk with you or to meet with you and help you get your uh, dream of having your, your own dashboards um, made into reality. So thank you so much for joining in and I will be around for a while just for questions and answers.